Hello and welcome to a new video. It has been quite some time and it's always a lot of work making videos. What happened since the last video? I changed my job. Almost two years I was working at some engineering on the product called Risotto. I was also working on that using the Godot engine. And you probably saw me posting videos somewhere. I played in the background. So now I'm working at Bippin Bits. You may have heard of it. They recently released Domekeeper and I'm now part of the core team. It has been a really awesome first month. Super exciting job. I am working there, also working in Godot. It's a ton of fun, a great team. I also recently released the demo for Godot 4 called Desert Light. I was working on it for, yeah, quite some time, but most of the time was spent waiting now for music and finishing up the assets, optimizing everything a little bit. The first iteration that I was showing on social media was very high poly and yeah, not very well optimized. But you can get it now. I put a link in the description and you can check it out if you like. And what I want to do in this video, so much talking just for the intro, but Let's get to the video. Um, what I want to do today is to build a scene in Godot 4 um, using the assets of Desert Light. So we're going to build a 3D scene and I'm going over some settings of the world environment. I'm going to give some tips on composition of your scene. And uh, yeah, I'm just starting building it. Um, usually I have a very strong concept for a video, but this time I will just start out and we'll see where it takes us and uh, we play around with some settings and yeah hopefully in the end everything will look cool and um, if i encounter something that i want to talk about uh, a bit more in depth while i work i will just stop working in godot and explain those concepts and um, so it will be a very open format video i hope you will enjoy it and let's jump right in i opened the original demo scene to start out and then let's create a new scene let's call it demo 2 are very creative and first I want to start out by blocking out the scene so to get an idea of what we will be building um, to do that I get a mesh instance let's put a box mesh on it let's make it 10 by 10 meters like this yeah and now the blank canvas syndrome Maybe we can build something. So I duplicate those and then just move them around. And like this, I will quickly block out the main scene. Maybe we can do something like a cool canyon or something the like. So by pressing T or pressing this button here, you can use local space, space which is pretty cool to move stuff around. I like to switch between using local space and um, world space quite often. So yeah, let's do, let's do a canyon, but without a roof maybe. And then something in the center to make it more interesting. If I want to change the shape of the mesh, I will just go in here. And do it like this, but you can also just change the scale of the object. And then some kind of bridge. By using middle mouse, you can move the camera. By holding shift and using middle mouse, you can pan the camera. So let's find a main perspective. It should be something like this for the scene. And I think I want this side to be higher, just to make it a bit more asymmetric, asymmetrical um, and make it more interesting. Maybe we can also make it like this. This gives some interesting shape and if we combine it with something over here, could look really interesting. And then we could make some kind of entrance here for a cave or, or an old ruin. All right, so let's also add a new node 3D. Let's call this lights. Let's add a directional light. I 
think I want this to come in here. Let's enable shadows and have a look how it works. So right now uh, I'm looking in how I want the light to look in the scene in a general sense. Like, of course, we are going to move the light around, but the first step I want to get an impression how the light could be interacting with those different geometries in the map. For example, you see this part here um, will look pretty interesting and I want stuff to like this to happen, like objects that catch a little bit of the light. For example, if I use this and bring it up, I can create a very interesting shape here for a shadow and also create a more interesting shape up here where the light is catching this little edge of what will eventually later be a stone or something like that. So let's scale this a bit like this and also this over here like this and the ground plane. And now we're starting to see some interesting shapes. By the way, with this button here, we can disable the environment. Um, sometimes it's good to get a more clear view and um, to have everything else disabled. But we can keep it on for now. Okay, so now I have this and maybe I want some more rocks to come down from the front and have some kind of canyon opening. So again, composition. Um, if I move this here, I'm losing this interesting shape this interesting contrast here with this stone. So I don't want this. I can, of course, tilt it a bit. And now again, I'm getting this interesting shape to stick out from the floor, get it to look much more interesting. And I can do the same thing here. I can just tilt this, bring it down a bit, and then I will have a much more interesting line leading up here. So eventually I won't be doing this uh, too crazily, but I can just leave it in for now and uh, maybe look later how it looks, how it works out. But yeah, we can also do something like this. This looks cool. I like this. Maybe a bit less. Okay, so I think for the main geometry, this looks interesting enough. Let's pull this down a bit more. And here in the back, I will do some kind of opening and uh, maybe cave or we can also use stones, something like that. I want to tilt this a bit more to point in this direction a bit more. And now we could do two things. We can do this. And if you follow this line and this line, it will point over here. Or we can do this and then the lines will point a bit more toward this corner here. So if we put something here that looks interesting, it should work out. Um, ideally, we want everything to point to the cave entrance. So we can try rotating this like this and this like this. Let's try it out. We give this a more neutral edge. Like this. Yeah, I mean, we could do it like this, but I don't like it too much. Let's go back. I like this much more, even if it points up to the sky. But um, the overall shapes look more interesting but also a bit conflicting. I'm a bit torn, let's put it like this. So now we have this line here pointing towards the entrance, we have this line here pointing towards the entrance, we have this line here pointing towards the entrance. A lot of lines that point towards the entrance, this makes it a bit more dynamic. I think this will be fine. We can of course also tilt those so they 
point a bit more towards the entrance of the the thing. Angle this like this. So now everything is almost everything. This one not. But I like it so much, so I will leave it in. All right. Now we have this. Um, eventually, we should put something more to the top. Why? Because if we are going to add some volumetric fog and we have this directional light from the top right, the directional light from the top right, then everything will be flooded with fog. So we have a couple of options here. Um, I usually just like to put more stuff on top of the scene if you want to work with volumetric, light, uh, volumetric fog. But I want to for this video. And... Um, we put it here and I pull it a bit to the front like this. It could look interesting. So now we have more stuff that casts a shadow here. And stuff that casts a shadow is good because then we will have more interesting volumetric fog later. I miss, however, seeing a bit of the sky. Maybe we can fix that by turning it a bit. I like this. And now we have a little bit of sky peeking through here and here. And like this, the scene looks interesting enough. Um, let's put in a camera so we kind of save this viewing angle and we can come back to it. So I try to align this camera with our view. And if we click this button, we get this perspective and I think it matches up pretty good. All right, let's jump out of this. Now I don't need this anymore. And let's look at this mess from the outside. It looks uh, very crazy. So what I want to do right now to fix this as a first step, we take all of this and now we look for some good angle to set up our scene. Let's look from the top because if I start like this, everything will be turned. It makes no sense. So let's just... Uh, Let's just take this and rotate it so we have at least some kind of alignment with the world space. Let's put it in the center like this. And now it makes a bit more sense. All right. And it looks the same. We moved everything. We moved the light. We moved the camera. So everything will be fine. Let's... Um lock the light for now and lock the camera so we don't accidentally move it and then we're going to replace what we just built with some assets and i have some assets here from the demo scene i have some meshes that we imported for example those um, those torches or those big rocks those ones but I already prepared scenes with them. And this is something I would advise to do. So you just have a couple of scenes, um, base scenes, like for example, the rocks. I have this big rock. It also already has a collider. So if you want to move around as the player later, it will be much easier to do so. And this is the version with the normal map. I'm not sure if I will keep this somehow. It doesn't look too great. So anyway, um, let's put in some rocks and now you can see um, the rock is way too big but I know that the rock has more or less the right scale so let's do one thing let's jump over to the main scene let's grab our player and let's put the player in the scene and then let's have a look on how big he is I scaled the player that is probably super dumb yeah, I think I want to make everything a little bit bigger. The best way to do this is to add a new node. Let's throw everything in there. First, we need to unlock those. All right, this one too. And then let's throw everything in here. And now we can scale this. So maybe something like this. Where's our player? 
Yeah, maybe even bigger. I want it to be a bit more epic. Maybe like this. Yeah. All right. Let's hop into the camera. You see it didn't really change, which is a good thing. Um, we should move the camera down more towards the eye level of the player to get a better impression of how everything will look. And let's keep it there, but move it down like this. And now everything looks a bit bigger, but it also changed the uh, the whole composition. So now we have to get back in and maybe change a thing or two. I mean, I like it, but um, it's not what I originally had in mind. Whoops. But yeah, I think it's fine. If you look up, it looks pretty epic and cool. And that's what we want, so. This angle here is maybe a bit too weak. This one here. Well, I guess this looks interesting enough. It looks a bit too big, but maybe we can break it up with some smaller shapes. And I also want to scale down this rock a little bit. But yeah, let's build the scene. So I have the rock here. Let's start putting rocks where those other things are. I will make it a little bit smaller. And now let's replace those blocks with proper assets. And as this is not Unreal Engine, we can't use Quixel or stuff like that. And I also want to go for a more um, stylized look. And with this, um, using those assets here makes much more sense. Let's also get the ground in. I'm using the same ground sand that uh, I used for the other scene. Eventually I'm going to replace it. But for now, it's going to be fine. And like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I'm probably going in later and just fix everything up. But I want to get the basic block out done rather quickly. All right, mm, we finished with blocking out the scene. So if we look in the camera, it looks pretty much like what we had blocked out. It's not so straight. This one is a bit uh, wobbly and this one too, but this will be fine. Um, let's see if we can put everything we build into another node. And then we will compare it, how it looks. It doesn't have to be a perfect match. We're not bound by law to make it look exactly like what we had played out, uh, planned out and laid out in the beginning. But uh, it's interesting to see if there are any major differences. So now let's hide it. Let's go into the camera and let's see how it compares. It's a bit different. It's more organic. Um, so what do I like? What do I don't like? Mm, let's let me do this. And let's open it up in here. And let's make a quick analysis of what we see. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. I just want to go over some things that I like and maybe don't like. So what I don't like is that this is a bit round, too round for my taste. 
I would like it more if it's straight. The same here. I don't like that it looks like an arc. And the same here. Like the slight angle is something I don't really like because this is the only place where it's where it's looking so organic uh, apart from the ground. But in the back here it looks very straight. Lines are connected very straight. And um, something else I don't like is this part here, this little window. It breaks up the shape too much. Um, maybe we can fix it by closing this triangle here. And right now it has a bit of an off balance. I mean, in the end, if we move the camera around, if we walk around as the player, of course, we're not having this fixed perspective that we have right now. But at the moment, this side here looks much heavier than this side over here. It's also caused by the light, of course. But um, if we would have a rendering or a fixed scene, I would take away some volume from this side. So let's go back in Godot and let's fix those problems. Um, so first these here. These are pretty easy to fix. We just try to get into the right perspective and now maybe I can rotate it to get a straighter edge. Or maybe I just need to rotate it a bit like this and move it upwards and now we have a much more straight line. We still have this round thing here which is probably caused by how the mesh is shaped. Maybe like this and this also gives us like a little nice opening here. And here on the second one we kind of have the same issue but maybe we can get away with just moving this down a bit more. And maybe we can even open it up eventually it would look interesting or it will look interesting let's jump into the camera i think i even like it more like this gives it a much more interesting shape against the sky and now all that's left is this corner up on the top here um what is this thing doing here better much better okay this triangle here i think i like it with the new opening can leave it now in there we have like one small thing over here where the meshes uh, interact in a not so nice way let's pull this forward a little bit okay now we've done this part let's do let's add some more details so now we have the big shapes out of the way we can start focusing a bit more on detail let's add some ground detail um, let's add the opening in the back here and then we can work with light a bit more. Okay, to add detail, of course, you need small things. Um, I have a couple of rocks prepared that are smaller. Um, I call it debris. You see this is some temple debris, but I think I also have some smaller... No, we don't want to write some smaller rocks that we can use for... Okay, um, we're just going to use this debris here and then um, probably just change the material override. I think this looks neutral enough so we can use it. Let's grab this material from here. Move over here and let's just make it local. Maybe this is not the best way to do it, but um, this is the way that we are going to do it right now. We don't want stuff like this to be floating. <laughs> so I'd rather check it two or three times. And uh, it's going to be like a little wasteful uh, using those big pieces and then just letting them stick out of the ground a little bit. But for this demo, it should be fine. So what I want is this. Small rocks or smaller rocks that stick out of the ground a bit. 
I fast forwarded this part where I'm just putting down more detail and more of the temple assets from the other scene. And then I start building up the entrance to this tunnel-like thing, also using the assets from the other scene and yeah, wanting to add more details and made it integrated better to the environment yeah, and then just building this little tunnel. And of course, this is not the way that I would build something for like a proper game. I would create assets that are really specialized for that use case, but for that demonstration here, it should be fine. And I'm also placing two lights to the left and to the right, just to make it look more interesting. And then I decided to add some stairs leading up to some giant mountain that should be visible on the horizon. And yeah, I was experimenting with how to place steps, if I can place some steps that are visible in the back, but I failed and <laughs> gave up on that idea. So I just placed some pillars on the rock in the background and that should be fine for this demo to give some background, to give some context where the player is. Okay, I think um, this is it from a modeling perspective, we could say. Of course, we could add more detail. I could create more assets, etc., etc. But for now, I think it's good. Um, we should start looking into, yeah, um, putting, getting some nice lighting in, creating some atmosphere. Like I said, we could continue on this forever, but um, that's not what this video should be about. So let's do one quick check how the light looks. I think it looks pretty cool. We can get some really nice mood on the back rock there with the sun going down. And maybe we could add one more thing here. Imagine if the sun goes down and it's already at this angle. I think it would look really cool if we add one rock here in the background, basically, that is not necessarily to be seen. But if we put it at the right position, then we could eventually get a nice shadow on here. Now you can see the shadow range is not enough. Um, we need to go into the light and in the shadow here we can see the maximum distance if we turn this up we also get a shadow here in the back let's put this to 400 and then let's do this so we get a nice interesting shadow shape going on when basically the sun is going down like this and hopefully as a player we won't see this we're down here in this alley more or less and if the sun goes down we will get this nice shadow eventually we will get also some artifacts but this is fine all right so far so good i think it looks pretty cool of course it's not perfect like we will have some bleeding going on here at this at the stairs this is far from perfect maybe we can just quickly add some blocker here i already created this thing here and we can just copy it and move it over to the stairs and do something like this to just block the light yeah those are the moments that are annoying but anyway Like, kind of like this, it should work out to block most of the problems. Let's hop into the camera. And let's start working with an environment. So we add a world environment node. And you can already see instantly that the mood of the scene changes. So the first thing I want to do is add a new environment set the background to sky now go into sky create new sky we create a procedural sky and now we have a sky we can set we can set the sky colors
And this also influences how the scene looks. Okay. Now for the ambient light, we can take it from the background. And what ambient light does is it will add a light to the overall scene. So if we turn down the energy here, you can see that we will have much harder, harsher shadows. And if we turn off the directional light here, why is it scaled? Huh. All right. Um, if you turn off the light here, you can already see that it changes the view of this overall scene or how it looks quite dramatically. I don't know why some of the materials are still lit. Eventually it's it's because of the materials. Let's check this out real quickly. Boop. We can do it from the camera. The material should be named Temple. <coughs> Eventually it has some backlight going on. No. Ah, it's probably the reflection of the sky. Yeah, okay. All right, that's not a big problem. All right, um, so back into the world environment. The sky contrib contribution basically tells our scene how much the sky material that we just created here is influencing the overall light situation in this scene. So if we turn this up to one and we go back into the sky and for example, we change the energy here, that will also influence how our scene looks. And if we change the color here, it will also change how our scene looks. So this is quite important to create a first um, overall look of your scene. If you don't have a sky material, of course, this will look completely different. If you have an indoor scene or a dungeon where there's no sky, you will probably have no ambient light and you have to work more with placing light scenes. That is also perfectly fine and we can later uh, change the sky material so it's more like a night scene and uh, then we can talk a bit about the differences there. So for now let's put it in some bluish hue here and yeah let's get back into the ambient light. Um, I don't want too much sky contribution I want it to be more like this. Yeah we can also disable it of course by the way. All right, <clears throat> so what else do we have? Uh, reflected light, in this case it's the background. We can also disable it. Now you can see the influence that we just um, played around with from the specular, from the specularity, it's gone now. And maybe I even put it on disabled so we have more control about the overall look of the scene. Tone map is a quite important setting. Here you can create um, control how the exposure of the scene works, how it's how it looks basically. If we switch those modes here at the moment, it's not going to have a dramatic influence. But if we set up everything and the light sources are in there, I will come back to this. For now, I set it to filmic. That's what I usually use. So this uh, screen space reflections, well, let's leave it off for now. Um, this is screen space ambient occlusion. Um, we can enable it and have a look at it, what it does. So ambient occlusion is basically creating shadows or a dark area where two objects or two surfaces are close to each other. For example, if we put another mesh here. Okay, so if we move this closer to the ground, you can see this dark area that will appear. And that is the ambient occlusion. So two objects are close to each other and they create this darker area. I really like the effect. Um, I usually play around with the value a bit. I usually make it a bit more intense. So you can see now like this, you can control the intensity. You can control how it falls off. 
So you can go really crazy with those values. The detail value doesn't seem to do too much. Horizon, so how it's fading out. Sharpness also doesn't seem to do a lot. Anyway, let's turn this down a bit again. Let's increase the radius a little bit, not too much, otherwise it starts to look weird. So I think like this, it looks okay. Let's leave this in here now, so we have a reference. Um, this is indirect light, and if we turn this on, it also adds, yeah, kind of those occlusions and also reflections. All right, let's um, turn our light on so we get an impression on how the scene looks. And you can start it slowly. Uh, you can see it slowly starts to look more interesting from the light aspect. Uh, we can also just save this here. And let's save it into resources and let's call it Rafa Environment 2. And like this, we can quickly turn it off and turn it on again. All right, so you can see if we enable and disable it, you can see here how the light hits the ground and the yellow light from the ground is reflected back onto the surface. This is what screen space indirect light does. You can also change the radius. Now you see how the influence is scattered more. Maybe we turn it down a little bit to get a more intense effect. We can also control the intensity, but then it starts to look really weird. And the sharpness. But again, this doesn't do too much. So let's keep it on the normal setting. All right, um, sign distant field global illumination. This is an interesting one, especially for outdoor scenes. You can see if we enable it, uh, it starts to make look everything weird. But yeah, maybe we can play around with it a bit and um, get some more interesting effects. So we can enable and disable that it reads the sky, which is pretty cool. We can control the bounce feedback that will control how much the light bounces around or the intensity of the bounce. This is the energy setting. With this, you can control how much influence it has on the scene, how much energy the light has that is bounced back. We can also put this on a negative value. I don't know why, but yeah. You can see the effect is, has a pretty dramatic impact. I'm not always sure if I like it because sometimes you get these weird artifacts like over here. So if you want to use it, I would recommend you putting it um, on a lower energy and um, also putting it on a rather low distance, to be honest, because otherwise you will get these uh, really weird effects in a distance. I'm not sure if I really like this effect. Um, I mean, I'm sure if you can, if you spend the time with it, you can make it look good. But sometimes I have to feel it introduces too many artifacts at the moment. Glow is something I almost always add. I like to go in on all levels, set it on normalized, additive or screen, both are pretty good, but uh, I would usually not put it on soft light. Um, the effect is very weak. So let's put it on like this. Bloom is something so it will influence all of the scene. I don't want this on for now. Fog is also always good, and fog is also relatively cheap, relatively. And you can see what kind of effect it has on the background. This is something I really want to have, especially to create this kind of atmospheric effect. So you can see how the light influences it. And the sun scatter. This is uh, the effect of the sun coming in the fog. Sky effect is also pretty important. So if I put this on, it will darken the sky. I don't necessarily want this because the way that I want to use this effect is more to create an atmospheric overcast effect on the background and not to affect the sky itself. On height, you can also create... Um, ah, I have to turn this on. 
So here we can also create some ground fog effect. You can see it like this. It's pretty interesting and if you turn down the density a bit, oh, not so much, just a bit, then it can be really nice, like this. Just a bit. Aerial perspective is only important if you are working in a non-first person game, for example a top-down game, then you have to use this setting for the fog. And density, of course, controls the density of the fog. And I don't want it too dense. I want it to be more in the background. So let's create some fog. And I also want it to be more yellowish. Like a sandy look. And I think I will remove the, the height uh, density again. So like this, I think it works a bit better. I would love to have control about the way it falls off. Right now it already influences this thing here in the front and I would prefer if it doesn't. But anyway, let's keep it in for now. Now to one of my most favorite effects and it's called Volumetric Fog. It can add a lot of atmosphere to your scene with this fog that is influenced by light. And yeah, let's play around with that a bit. So let's turn up the density. Let's turn down the sky effect. So now let's play around with those sliders for a bit. Um, this is a nice one. Um, this happens sometimes. Well, the only thing that helps is to close the scene. Close the viewports. And open it back up again. Unfortunately, I don't know what causes it, but sometimes uh, the light can go a bit crazy and then it gets stuck in this weird overdrive mode. Ah, now we go. Okay. Probably our camera is in the direct sunlight. Um, let's disable it for now and look what's the problem. Yeah, you can see our camera is in direct sunlight and that will mean that um, this fog is really hitting the camera. So to avoid this, let's just take one of those rocks Let's move it over here a bit. Let's rotate it. Let's put it down like this. And with this, we will have a bit more shadow on our camera. And what that will do is to make it much easier to control the effect and also make it look a bit better in the game. So let's turn the light again. Enable the volumetric fog again and now you can see it hits right through here and if we play around with these sliders here you can also see how it changes the scene and with volumetric fog you can also see that it really darkens the scene so we have to do something about that first i also want it to be colored a bit like sand let's go in and turn it down Maybe more like this. And with those sliders you can control how the fog looks, where it's the most uh, the most intense effect basically. So I think the default setting is pretty good here. If you go into your project settings, you will find more control about this effect. Here we already have changed settings from my project. This is not the default settings. If you want to look into those, you can just download my project, look into those settings. It's not too different from the default ones, but you can have a look. Here the volumetric fox size, I turned it up. And as you can see, it changes the quality and the sharpness of it. The more we add here, the sharper and the more detailed it's going to be. But it's also much more performance hungry. Let's put it on 265. Now you can see everything looks a bit dull. Um, this is where we come back to tone map and we can play with the exposure. So for example, if we put, uh, turn up the exposure, it will get back more contrast. If we put up the white point or change the white point, you can also control how the scene looks. 
or you put it on Aces, which puts back more contrast. So this is the default setting. This is Aces, you can already see it brings back a lot of contrast. And what I also want to do is to enable adjustments here and to add a color correction texture or gradient. And in here I usually come in and I put one here and the one here and the one on the top. I color a bit more towards the yellow side or warm side. Not too much, just a tiny bit. And the one in the shadows I put into some cold area like bluish or purple hue and then also increase the saturation a bit and you can see how it changes the color on the left now it's a bit more dramatic if i put it up all the way then you can see how it influences the colors in the scene and what this does and what i use it for is to create a certain mood in the scene usually i want the shadows to be cool from the color temperature aspect and the lights i want to be more warm so i just add some yellowish hue here and you can now see if i enable and disable it it changes the overall look quite dramatic it's not too crazy but i always like to do this um, to color correct the scene let's hide the ball it's a bit irritating okay now we're slowly getting somewhere it's still um, not perfect so let's play around with the volumetric fog a bit more. And I think we need just more power in the directional light. So let's go in there and let's change the energy here. First, we want more volumetric fog energy. So it just looks more intense. I also want more energy overall. And we can put in some intense value because it's the sun, so it's going to be bright. Let's put it on 10 and maybe this on two. And now if we go back into the world environment, we go into the tone map and now we can play with the exposure. And you can see now it has a really much more dramatic impact on the light. And what we want now is some detail in the shadow. And here the indirect light usually comes in really handy. If we enable the sine distal field global illumination, it will already change it quite dramatic. So we can we can turn down the energy a bit like this. What I don't like so much is that it turns everything so red. That is something I'm not a fan of. I would love to have more control here, but all right. Hmm, that doesn't seem to do a lot. I mean, of course, that makes sense. Um, if you think about these rocks being super red and the light reflects back onto this, then the rocks are going to be even more red. Makes sense, but um, yeah, it's a bit hard to control the effect like this. So let's go back into the normal fog. And yeah, what I notice, what is not so great about the volumetric fog is that it influences the light. Maybe we can turn that down. Yeah, but now it starts to look like really weird. Um, hmm. Let's play around with some sliders. Yeah, we definitely want some global illumination injection. Because if the light would hit the fog, the fog would also spread the light. So that makes a lot of sense. Maybe we don't overdo it, but we can also play with the light later, how strong it is. Okay, I like this effect much more. Now maybe we should go into the sky and increase the energy there. I think that makes a lot of sense because like this it looks like a night scene. We want some energy in the sky. 
Maybe we can also make it a bit more blue. Would be cool to have some clouds, but maybe we can look for material later. I think I will disable the ambient light completely. And I need to play around a bit more with the exposure. Not too happy with it. And after that, I still need to tune and fine tune a bit the settings on the volumetric fog. Yeah, we need to keep details spread up a bit, otherwise it starts to introduce some artifacts. All right. Maybe we should just give it a go. I don't know what happens if we press play, if we get into the first person camera or not. Let's see. No, we just go into this camera here. Let's stay in this camera and just play around with the light a bit more. So we could also color it a bit. Let's add some more blur to the directional light shadow. And let's play around with how it looks. I think that already works pretty well. I'm not so sure about the fog, the normal fog. Let's go back to the world environment, check out the fog a bit. But yeah, that's not a problem. Fog is doing a good job. Maybe I want a bit less light energy and a lot less. Oh, the sun, sun scatter is crazy. I mean, it's cool, but the problem is that it's also happening here, where I don't want it to be happening. You know what? We can play with the this maybe we can just make an kind of like an inversed fog yes this works so maybe we can just keep the fog a bit higher then we don't have it in the front here yeah i think that works much better A bit of sun scatter. Still a bit too intense in the front, but maybe we can turn down the density a bit more, like this. And now you can see what a big difference the sign distance field global illumination has. Like, this looks completely different. And I'm still not a fan of the reflection where... Oh, I enabled it again by mistake. Okay. Still don't know what this does. I have the feeling it does nothing. Okay, maybe this is what we want. No effect of the sun, uh, of the sun, and this directional light has no effect on the indirect light at the moment, or very little. If we turn this up a bit, it may just be what we want. If we put it on one, it's too much, but maybe 0.5. This is starting to look cool. And you can see if we turn this back on, it's just way too intense. All right, slowly we're getting somewhere. <clears throat> Let's turn down the saturation a little bit. 
and come back into the tone map and let's try out different looks. This is too much contrast. This is too boring. I like filmic. I always like filmic. Let's put the exposure on 0 0.2. And also if we change the color, for example, we go for more sunset-like atmosphere. Could look really nice. And we need also to, um, to change this. Something like this could look really cool. Maybe we do something more abstract. And in the back here, we can see that there is this um, whoops, this tunnel with the blue light, which will create a nice contrast. But it also creates some problems because you can see that the fog already starts disappearing before we want it to disappear. So if we put on more distance, ah, this is the distance for the GI. We don't need that, but maybe here. Let's put it on 64. I think that gives a much nicer fade in. Yes, this is looking cool. Right, I'm starting to like this. Um, so. so now it's time to add back the player controller and um, yeah, to set it up in a way so we can walk around in the scene, look at it from first person and as I already did that in the original demo, I can just reuse most of the code and assets there. And I got the setup done in a couple of seconds. We could play around with the light a bit to basically um, get the same behavior that we had before in in the demo scene. So let's add an animation player. This is like the quickest way to do things like this. And then let's get the light that we had. And I think I want to add one more light Whoop. in this tunnel thing. One light to emphasize on this um, blue light here a bit more. Let's add an Omni light. And now we can also see that it starts to work. It's just fading. So we need to disable, oh, the distance fade is already disabled. <clears throat> then why is it not working? Why is it fading? Hmm. Set the volumetric fork. I mean, if we increase this, this here, we also lose detail. So maybe you see it, um, if we set it to a lower value, we will get more detail in the front. If we set it to 12, for example, we will have perfect detail, but then we won't have it in the back. If we set it to 128, we will lose some detail in the front. I think, I think 64, I mean, this looks really nice. Maybe something in between. Okay, I like this much more. Okay, so let's animate the light, what we initially wanted to do. Um, let's grab the rotation. Oops, I didn't want to reset it. I wanted to make a new track. Let's key the rotation. And I don't need to do it 20 seconds or something like that. Let's just do five seconds. And we put one key in the middle, where maybe it's like this. No, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, let 
somehow it's still not doing what I want. Okay, let's just use this differently. Mm. You know what? We're going to kill this track and completely change how our light will work. Mm -hmm. So let's reset this. Ah, here's the problem. So we have this thing here, it's called lights and it's down here, which is fine. Let's reset everything here too. Reset the scale, reset the position. So now we have our light here. Let's reset everything. All right. And now let's put it like this. Let's turn it like this. And if we now animate the rotation of this, then we can change the sky and it makes more sense for my brain. Maybe for yours too. And if we put it like this, then we can just flip this and it will create one nice motion. But what do we actually want to do? Light source, where are you? <laughs> so one thing that could be really helpful is to, would be to just disable the environment like this. And now we eventually see a bit better what we do. Where is my light? There it is. Okay, let's reset the rotation again. There's my light source. I want it to be over there, like this. And now we can do this. And this should look like some kind of day cycle. And then we can just animate this thing here instead of the light directly and hopefully it will make it a bit easier to control so let's key the rotation let's move it over one time like this this is hopefully giving me the effect that i like let's go back into our camera and let's see how it looks from there So we keyed the rotation, but what we didn't key is this rotation. So we can still change this and this should help us to create a more interesting pattern, basically. I think I like this. All right, so now next step is to animate the light intensity and also animate the color. So I want this to be the color in the morning. And then for noon, we go more to a neutral color. And in the evening, it's going to be a bit more orange. Doesn't look too bad. And now we also need to change the energy. And of course we could set this to cubic, but eventually it will create some problems. Let's see. And what we also must change is of course the color of the sky. We can also come in here and just change this or we can just change the energy we don't need to change the color i think the color was cool so let's change the energy a super simple day and night cycle It's not physically accurate or anything, but it will do its job. What we also have to take care of is the fog. Right here it starts to look awkward. So let's uh, animate this too. Just come in here and we can keyframe this, hopefully. Why can't we keyframe it? Can't we keyframe this? Why? Now it works, okay. 
So probably we need to change light energy. Let's test it out real quick. Yes, okay. You could also change the color probably. Looking good. All right. And at night, we also want to see something. So what could we do about this? Earlier, I told you about, um, about ambient light. And we can just use a color for that. For example, some bluish tone. Something like this, maybe. And then we can add some ambient light. And I don't know why it doesn't work. Ah, now it slowly starts to work. But why it is so black? Is it the fog? No, it's not the fog. What's going on here? <laughs> What's going on here? What is causing this? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well. <laughs> I have no clue what is causing this. Is it a distance? So something weird is going on here. I really don't know what it is. So maybe we just turn it off at night. I mean, of course, we could also add another directed light and make it a bit um, like moonlight or something like that. We could also try that. I'm not a fan of of playing around here with um, with this too much. Somehow it feels wrong. Okay. Let's add another direct light. Uh, how can we handle this in a graceful way? It annoys me a bit that we can work around this, but um, yeah, that's the way it is. Let's accept this. Maybe it even looks cooler, I don't know. I'm a bit annoyed. Anyway, the fog is having a bit too much influence for my taste. And the night sky eventually could also use some energy. What could really work would be adding stars, but let's just keep it black for now. Okay, I think this looks good. Um, zero? Really? Does this even do anything? <laughs> this was interesting. Setting it to zero. Give super, super soft shadows. Why? I don't know. Setting it to one doesn't seem to have this effect, but zero gives a <laughs> really cool effect. Maybe I will just keep it at zero. I mean, this looks really cool. Does this work? Why is this working? All right, I'll take it. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> let's keep it at zero. I mean, it looks cool. Okay. Mm. Now let's just take this animation player. Let's call it day and night cycle let's put it on autoplay looping and does it even loop i never tested it but probably not ah it kind of loops maybe we just add seven seconds uh, let's add let's put it on seven and now yeah this works perfectly fine not
All right. All right, um, all that's left to do now is to add some effects. Uh, luckily, we already have some. We can take the fireflies, we can take the sand particles, copy those over. Um, let's put them in here too. The sand particles are pretty cool. They also get hit by the light shafts. Let's turn them up a bit more to see them a bit better. But yeah, let's not do the fireflies. Let's just do the sand particles. I don't want to animate any more stuff. And let's start the scene and let's have a look. Oh yeah, this is some <laughs> crazy day and night cycle. Uh, I want this to be slower. So let's go in and let's set this to 0 0.2 or something like this. <clears throat> Still a bit too fast. Like this. Yeah, I think this could work. Maybe that's a bit too much fog for the overcast day. Let's go in the animation player. Let's check it out here. And maybe let's reduce the volumetric fog intensity at the middle of the day. All right, um, so let's add some music and uh, we're done. Let's just see where we placed them. The wind should be here. The second wind can be here. The music chimes is in the tunnel. And the normal music is everywhere. So let's Try it out. I'm gonna shut up now and uh, yeah, we gonna look how it sounds and feels. so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, 
but I have one last thing, one idea that I want to try out. So we still have the blocks here and we have the scene here and the entrance and the outside detail and all kind of the, these things that we've started to put in. But just for fun, I want to see how this blocked out scene looks and um, if we land it somewhere remotely close. <coughs> so let's just play the animation and have a look. And you can see how even with a completely different geometry, the atmosphere that we created and the light and shadow and the mood still holds up pretty well. I think, um, yeah, we managed to put together a pretty nice setup. And having a setup like this also allows you to go back and check if some settings still make sense, if they really look good. Um, the simpler the geometry, the easier it is to see how the light interacts and how the light works. And if it really looks good or if it's just, for example, diffused or blurred by the textures you use um, or by the effects you use, having simple geometry yeah, just shows the flaws very well. Like, for example, here you can see those, those splotches and those are probably introduced from the global illumination. If we turn the global illumination, illumination down a bit, those are a lit, little less visible. We can also uh, play with the settings here. Yeah, of course you can also always go into the project settings and play around there with the values. Um, if we go here to environment, <coughs> we can also set uh, things there, change the quality levels here. And of course, also depending on your scene, this is not the only way to do stuff. You can also, for example, add a voxel GI. You could bake your light if you don't have a dynamic light um, going in there. You could just bake the light, which also gives a really high quality light. Um, yeah, you want to consider different options. And then just slide the sliders until stuff looks good. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, even if the format was a lot more chaotic than usually. And if you enjoyed it, follow me here on YouTube, um, hit the bell and all the stuff, you know, the drill. And uh, yeah, I'm mostly posting on Twitter, so if you find it interesting, follow me there. I'll also upload the scene into the Desert Light repository, so if you want to have a look on your PC, you can just clone the repository, have a look. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.